Berger is global head of energy pricing at S&P Global Platts, and he joins me now. So, Dave, the market's focused very much on a nine-month extension to at least the end of next year. Do you think they're going to get that? Well, uh, since they agreed their cuts a year ago, it's been success after success for OPEC. And the question they face tomorrow in Vienna is how far can they push their luck? Now, the market is expecting to see a nine-month cut. Uh, maybe as little as a six-month cut because the skeptics in the group don't want to create the headroom for someone else to come in like the U.S. and take market share away. But certainly an extension of some degree looks like it's on the cards tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, the market looks to have priced in nine months. If, if it gets less than that of an extension, then could the price sell off, do you think? Well, most of the people we talk to in the market are expecting a case of buy the rumor, sell the fact to play out tomorrow. It's a classic market scenario. So the question for many folks is not so much will prices fall tomorrow, but really how far might they fall tomorrow? Because if you think about it, oil prices are 50 percent higher than they were earlier this yeah. year. And they're three times the levels they were when they agreed the cut uh, more than a year ago now. So really, it seems like the market feels a bit toppy right now. What about the position of the Russians? I mean, there have been indications that they're not happy with a very long extension of production cuts. Well, I can't remember an OPEC meeting that had as much drama associated with it in this decade as this one. And the Russians are certainly playing their part there. Energy Minister Novak, since he arrived in Vienna, has made it clear that Russia is not really willing to just sign up to a cut without a serious discussion about what the exit strategy should be for when cuts are eventually walked back. And I think that could be a real uh, wild card in the meeting tomorrow. What about uh, the supply and demand dynamics in the market right now, Dave? Pretty fascinating. You know, demand is really running away. It's the untold story of the market right now. But oil demand is rising by almost 2 million barrels per day per year right now, which is really unheard of. Even when China was booming at its height six or seven years ago, we didn't see this kind of demand growth. So demand is growing quickly. There's a sense that it could hit some headwinds if prices go much higher from here. And that is the real untold story. It's something OPEC will be watching tomorrow. Supply, meanwhile, the U.S. has added a surprisingly little amount of production this year, but it's gearing up to add more next year. We hear that a million barrels a day has been hedged uh, in the forward market in the last quarter. There's reports on that out right now, which suggests there could be another million barrels perhaps to come in the near future from the U.S. Good. I mean, that's a very interesting point you raise there. Why, why has U.S. shale production not been as strong this year as people thought it might be? Well, I think there's a little bit of... Uh, there's a bit of sensitivity in the U.S. around what the price might play out to be in the next year or so. A lot of folks got burned on the investments they made in the last three years, and that hasn't been talked about too much either. And I have a feeling that's been playing into a more moderate, more conservative lift in production and people's willingness to invest in that production so far this year. All right, Dave Ernsberger from S&P Global Platz. Good to see you.